Hello, and welcome to today's lesson on systems of equations. This is going to cover topics in the standard 2.4 in Algebra 1, and then it's also going to cover the topics in the Study Island lesson, systems of equations. So if you're working in any of those things, this is where you want to be. <clears throat> In today's lesson, we're going to go over how to solve systems of equations. Remember, there's three ways. You have graphing, elimination, and substitution. I'm going to show you a little bit, an example from each of those. In addition, I'm going to show you a backup way that works on some problems that if you get stuck on the EOI, that you can resort to to find your answer. So I'm excited that you're here, and let's start off with some examples about graphing. All right, just so you know, I'm going to show you the three ways, and in all ex these examples, they tell you in the direction whether to use graphing, elimination, or substitution. On the EOI or in Study Island, you can pick which one of those you want. You don't necessarily have to follow the directions. Now, when you're working in your curriculum, you should follow the directions because you need to be familiar with all three ways. However, on the EOI, if you look at that and you're like, I can definitely get the answer using substitution, but it asked me to do elimination, don't worry about it. Do it the way you know how to get the answer. All right, so in this problem, we have these two equations that they graphed for us, and they want us to find the solution to this system. So when we're graphing, the answer is where those lines cross. So these two lines are cross at x negative 3, and y is 1. So they cross at the point negative 3, 1, which that answer is letter A. So this answer, or this problem here, it's still a graphing one, only it's a graphing one that has a word or problem associated with it. The, fam the Fleming family is planning a family vacation and trying to decide between staying in a hotel or staying in a cabin. Based on the graph below, how many nights can they stay in the hotel or the cabin and pay the same amount? Well, the answer to that is going to be where these two lines cross. So they are the intersection is right here. The x-coordinate of that intersection is 3, and the y-coordinate is 250. So that means they wanted to know how many nights they can stay in the hotel. Well, nights is my x-axis, so that means that 3 is going to be my answer. So my answer here is letter B. So make sure when you're answering the word problems that you look at the right axis that they're asking for because they gave you that 250 as an answer to try to trip you up, but that was the cost of the stay for 3 nights in either place. Alright, before I show you the substitution method, let's go ahead and take a few notes on the, what those steps are going to be. So my first step is going to be to solve one equation for a variable. Typically, that's going to be x or y. Sometimes you're working, there are no x and y's, but typically it's x or y. But you would, if it was a and b, you would solve for a and b. So substitution, the ex substitute the expression from step one into the other equation and solve for the other variable. And I know you have to copy this all down into your notes, so feel free to pause and copy and then rejoin us. <clears throat> Number three, substitute the answer from step two into the revised equation from step one and solve. So let's go ahead and look at an example. All right, so in this problem here, they want us to solve using substitution. Like I said, though, if you can solve easier with elimination on the AOI for this problem, go for it. So I, my first step in substitution is to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So I have an x, a y, an x, and a y to pick from. I personally want to solve for this x. So my first step, I'm going to rewrite that equation, 2x minus 8y equals 4, and I want to get that x by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the 8y to both sides. So these 8y's are going to cancel out, and that leaves me with just 2x equals 
And I can't combine 4 and 8y. They're not like terms, so I just write 4 plus 8y. Now, I want to divide every term here by 2 to continue to get that x by itself. So when I cancel those 2's to undo the multiplication between the 2x, I undo those and I'm left with just x. And then I have 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And then I have 8 divided by 2, which is a plus 4y. And so now I have that first step done. I have that x all by itself. So my next step is going to be to substitute this equation into my other equation. So that's going to be my step 2. So anywhere in my second equation that I see an x, I'm going to replace it with what I just solved. So I have a negative 3, and then I hit my x, so in parentheses, I'm going to put what x equaled in my first step. So it's going to be 2 plus 4y. I'm going to continue with my uh, rest of my equation, which is plus 2y equals 6. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation for y. So I have parentheses. So my first step is going to be to distribute that negative 3. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And negative 3 times positive 4 is a negative or minus 12y. And then I still have the plus 2y equals 6. So next I'm going to combine like terms. I have the two y terms and they're on the same side of the equal sign so everything is going to stay the same. So negative 12 y plus 2 is negative 10 y and I'm still going to have that negative 6 and the equal 6 and then I'm going to add 6 to both sides. It's now a two-step equation. So these sixes cancel out, and I'm left with a negative 10y on the left, and then 6 plus 6 is 12 on the right. And then my last step is going to be to divide both sides by negative 10. These negative 10s cancel out, and y equals, and 12 divided by negative 10. I can't do that. That's going to be a decimal, and if I look over at my answers, they're in fraction form, so I'm going to leave my answer in fraction form. 12 over negative 10 reduces to negative 6 fifths. In this problem, it actually only asks for y, so I could actually stop here, and my answer is going to be b. However, let's say I wanted to know x and y. I'm going to go show you how to finish that. So your last step is you have, you're going to take what you, your answer in step two and substitute it into the equation that you solve for in step one. So here, step three, I'm going for x equals two plus four y, but now I know that y is now negative six fifths. So 4 times negative 6 fifths is 2, well I have the 2 plus, and then 4 times the negative 6 fifths is going to be negative 24 fifths. And then 2 plus negative 24 fifths is going to be negative 14 fifths for your x number. And so that means as a coordinate, your answer is negative 14 fifths, comma, negative 6 fifths. And that would be your final answer if they asked you to do the x and the y. Now we're going to go over elimination. So these are the steps that you're going to follow to solve a system of equations by elimination. So you're going to arrange like terms. in columns. Usually this is standard form. So x term plus the y term equals a number. That's what standard form is. Okay, you're going to multiply to create opposite coefficients.
Then you're going to add the equations and solve for one variable. And then you're going to substitute that value into any equation and solve for the second variable. So I know you have to copy everything here, so go ahead and pause, and then when you're ready, um, we'll move on to the next example together. Okay, so our first step is done for us in this example. The x's are lined up, the y's are lined up, and the numbers are lined up. So I don't have to rearrange the equations at all. My next step is to multiply to create opposite coefficients. So that means I need to have the same number but opposite signs either in front of the x's or in front of the y's. So I typically say just pick the pair you like the looks of the best. So do you rather work with 5 and 4 or would you rather work with 4 and 9? I would rather work with 5 and 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, mul they're both positive, so I'm going to have to multiply one of them through by a negative number. So since the bottom is a 4, I multiply everything on the top by a 4, and then I want one of them to be negative, so I'm multiplying those by negative 4. And then the top coefficient is a 5, so I'm multiplying the bottom through by a positive 5. And that's going to give me new equations. So for my t I'm working with my top equation here first. So negative 4 times 5 is negative 20x plus negative 4 times 4 is negative 16y. That equals negative 4 times 25 is negative 100. Then my bottom equation, I'm multiplying everything through by positive 5. So 4 times 5 is a positive 20x plus 9 times 5 is a positive 45y. And that equals, and then 49 times 5 is 245. Okay, so that's my first step done. And you can see I created a negative 20 and a positive 20 for opposite coefficients. So now I can just add everything. And that's going to be my second step. So negative 20 plus 20x, those cancel out and I'm not, I don't have an x term anymore. It's zero. And then negative 16 plus 45 is a 29y. And then negative 100 plus 245 is positive 145. And now I just solve for y. So I'm going to divide both sides by 29. These cancel out, and I'm left with y equals, and 145 divided by 29 is 5. So I already have my y term. Now I'm going to go ahead and have to find my x term. So my last step in my notes is to substitute this y value that I just found, y equals 5, into either of these equations. I personally like working with smaller numbers, so I'm going to use this first equation here. So I have a 5x plus 4y, but I now know that that y is a value of 5, so I'm not going to write 5, I'm not going to write y, I'm going to write 5 in its place. I'm going to substitute it in. And that equals 25. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for x. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply that 4 times 5 is 20 equals 25. And now it's a two-step equation. So I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. These 20s cancel out. And I'm left with 5x equals on the left side. And 25 minus 20 is 5. And then I divide both sides by 5 and x equals 1. So as a coordinate, my answer is 1, 5. And the answer that I'm looking for here is a, because it has x equals 1 and y equals 5, which is what I had. Now let's say you forgot how to do all of this and you wanted to still get this problem right on the EOI. So if you have both x and y listed in your answers, you can go ahead and just plug these in. So if you're going to do it that way, my first equation is 5, and I'm testing out my first answer of a, 
So I'm going to plug in, A tells us X is 1, so I'm going to put an 1 in for X, and it tells us 5 is Y, so I'm going to put a 5 in for Y. So that's going to look like this. And then I want to see, does this actually equal 25? Well, 5 times 1 is 5, 4 times 5 is 20, and then 20 plus 5 is 25. So it, that one checks out because both sides end up being the same. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my second equation. Both of them have to work out right in order for it to be the correct answer. This is also a way you could check yourself if it isn't multiple choice. So 4 times 1 is 4. I replace my x with 1 there. And then I replace my y with a 5 here. And 9 times, four, nine times 5 is 45. And then 4 plus 45 is 49. So both sides end up being the same, so this one checks out too. So that's why A is the correct answer. Now, if it wasn't the correct answer, so let's go ahead and look at letter C, where X is 5 and Y is 0. I want to show you how you could tell it wasn't the correct answer. So f for letter C, I would put in a 5 for X and a 1 for Y. So the 5 times 5 is 25, and the 4 times 1 is 4. 25 plus 4 is 29. That's not the same as 25, so they aren't the same on the either side. So you could rule that out as an answer. So that's just how you can go about to, um, ruling out answers without actually having to do elimination or substitution in case you forget how to or you want to double check yourself on the EOI. Right. <clears throat> this is a word problem with systems of equations. It says, Mega Movies hosted a film premiere on Friday night. They charge $7 for adults and $4 for children. 137 adults and children attended, and $890 was made in ticket sales. How many children and how many adults went to the film premiere? So we have to write the system. So that means I have to come up with two equations from this word problem. So when I go to do that, the first thing I always want to do is identify what it is I'm solving for. So it wants to know how many children and how many adults. So that's going to be my X and Y. So my X, I'm just going to, I always write this down, it's going to stand for the number of kids and my Y is going to stand for the number of adults. You could use any letters there but X and Y is pretty standard so that's why I chose those. Alright, so now I have to come up with two equations. Well, I know it's $7 for adults, $4 for children, and they made $890 in ticket sales. Those are all my money numbers. That's why I'm going to look at those first. Well, if I want to calculate how, if I want to calculate sales, I'm going to take 7 times the number of adults, so that's actually going to be y, plus 4 times the number of kids. So that's going to be 4x plus 7y. And that's going to equal that $890. And I wrote the x first because we like things to be in standard notation. And then we also know, they didn't write this number out, they tried to hide it from us, but there's 137 adults and children in total attendance. So that means if I add the number of kids plus the number of adults, I'm going to get 
137. And so now I just have a system of equations. So you can choose any way you want. You could, if you have graph paper, you could graph them, although I think your scale would get really big and out of control because of that 890. You could also have, or you could use elimination and substitution. It's your choice. I'm gonna go ahead and use elimination because that's my favorite way. It's the way I'm most comfortable with. Now remember, there's invisible ones in front of this x and this y. And I need to multiply through to create opposite coefficients. I already have everything lined up in x, y, and numbers on top of each other. So I'm going to choose, like I said, you can choose to work with a 7 and a 1 or a 4 and a 1. I'm going to choose to work with a 4 and 1. So I'm going to multiply through the top by 1. And that's actually not going to change anything. So if you realize that, you can skip this step or you can just carry through. Either way works. And I'm going to multiply through the bottom by a negative 4 to create those opposite coefficients. All right, so over here, when I multiply 4x times 1, that stays 4x. And then I multiply 7y times 1, that stays 7y. And then I multiply 890 times 1, and that stays 890. So like I said, that first equation doesn't change because we're just multiplying by 1. And then my bottom one here, I'm going to multiply by negative 4. So 1 times negative 4 is negative 4x. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4y. And then 4 times 137 is negative 548. All right, and so now I'm just going to add those equations. So the 4x's cancel out. 7y minus, plus the negative 4y is 3y. And 890 plus the negative 458 is 342. And then I'm going to divide both sides by the 3. I'm continuing to solve for y. These 3's cancel, and I'm left with y equals, and then 342 divided by 3 is 114. So there, that means my y stands for the number of adults. That means there's 114 adults in attendance, which the only one that has that is choice B. But I would go ahead and check the rest of it to make sure that you didn't make any mistakes. So I can choose either one of my original equations to substitute back into. I'm going to go with the yellow one here because it's less numbers, or let the numbers aren't as big. So I have the 1x, but the, x, the 1 isn't necessarily too right. So I'm going to have x plus the 1y, which I know the y is 114, equals 137. So then I just subtract 114 from both sides. These cancel, and I'm left with just x. And that's going to equal 137 minus 114 is 23. So the x is 23, which matches b, and so that is definitely my answer.